Hello. You want to talk about your dislike of bookkeeping? Is that what we're <laughs> talking about today? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, it's something that it's been an ongoing challenge for me and it's not getting any better. And clearly I'm not, I've got enough evidence in my life to know now that I'm not prepared to make the change to do the work that it needs to, uh, that needs to happen for me to do it myself. So I need help. Okay. You need help in which way? I need, need so I have a QuickBooks online account that uh, the only thing I know how to do is send an invoice. Uh, so, you know, I, I've got my year end for the. Um, okay. So you need a bookkeeper or an accountant? Yes. I've got an accountant. I need a okay. bookkeeper. You need mm -hmm. a bookkeeper. Okay. Um, are the numbers up to date? Mm. No. Can you elaborate on that? I'm not sure I understand what you mean. Um, With the year end being May 31st, therein lies my my urgency here is to get things because I just I got a, an email actually from my uh, accountant this morning. And OK, so this is what he said. This is an option for me. I thought I had a bookkeeper, but now she's missing an action. I don't know. She's not. <laughs> I see. Not communicating. So uh, then I reached out to him to say, what the hell am I going to do? I got like uh, May 31st year end and my bookkeeper ha is MIA. Okay. So he says, um, three ways to move forward. Look for a bookkeeper. That's what I'm doing. Do it yourself. That's not happening. And have us do the bookkeeping. So I, that's an option. I can get them to do the bookkeeping. They'll charge me for it. That might be the simplest thing. But I just wanted to talk to you because I, I had joined the QuickBooks uh, group on Facebook, wondering if I could learn something or find someone. And then you just happened to respond. And I don't believe in coincidences. So here we are. <laughs> OK. Um, OK. So a little background, I think, is needed here. Um, I started my first construction business when I was 17, developed 22 different franchises, sold the company after that, went straight into consulting. Then I found people. When they are asking for help, they they want people with skin in the game. So I started buying uh, shares in companies. Now I own shares in 19 different companies. One of them is a, a bookkeeping company. Um, so I also have 30 subcontractors that help me help these companies. And one of them is a bookkeeping, a forensic type uh, bookkeeping company that really deals with companies that their books are a mess that brings them up to date and uh, then takes them to the next level. So I have someone who can, you know, jump in and fix your books, get you ready as quickly as possible uh, and take the stress off your life in terms of bookkeeping. Yay. Sign me up. <laughs> okay. I will. Uh, her name is Leah. I'll have her reach out to you. Oh, Leah, that's my second name. Tanya Leah okay. McIntyre. Yeah. So you won't forget it then. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, okay. But tell me about Red Roof. Red Roof Recovery is something that uh, evolved from a, a domino effect in our lives. My sister was selling her house in Waterloo Region, and uh, my husband and I had just sold our house in Cambridge, and we were renting from her, helping her with her mortgage. And uh, I was working as a driving instructor and school bus driver for a special needs uh, group. And uh, my husband was commuting to Toronto for his job at Nestle. And we purchased this triplex in Godridge as our retirement plan because we, you know, we were wiped out in the crash of 08 pretty much. And uh, we were at an age where chances of building it back were slim to none. So we bought this triplex because one of the units was empty. So the plan was we would come up here on the weekends from Waterloo and work on it. And it had two tenants to help us pay the mortgage. So I thought mm -hmm. we were all set. But then the week before the closing date, uh, the upstairs tenant gave her notice to vacate. And then we later find out that she was vacating because the downstairs <laughs> tenant was uh, a nightmare. Ah. So none of this was disclosed, of course, until a week before closing. So now it's like, OK, great. So now we've got an empty unit and we are no, we know nobody in Godrich. And, uh, you know, this is going to be a nightmare. Uh, you know, maybe we'll just tolerate the tenant until we can figure out what to do. So that's what we did. We moved into because then my sister sold the house. So <laughs> so we ended up 
moving into the house to, uh, you know, start renovating it and figuring out what the hell we were going to do. And then my husband is up on in this floor uh, painting the the apartment, getting ready. And we had put a med red metal roof on it uh, first thing as soon as we bought it. And he said, you know, Tanya, this is a chance for you to actually pursue your dream. So I had this huge dream after I recovered from drug and alcohol addictions to revolutionize the recovery industry uh, because what we're doing with 30 day rehab doesn't work. And uh, I wanted, you know, a huge dream. And he said, just down, you know, downscale it. You could just do one person at a time, right? Because now we've got two vacant units. And he said, you could call it red roof recovery because he was looking out the window painting the roof on the new red red metal roof and i thought oh something just clicked and i thought wow what a brilliant idea mm -hmm. so therein lies the seed that was planted and then when covid hit we were just ready we had done three pilot students and i had tweaked the program and i was feeling really confident all ready to uh, start marketing and get a first paying client and covid hit and then the vaccine mandate hit in Toronto and my husband gave his uh, notice and retired early and is, is has joined me. Okay. So but are you a nonprofit non or are, are you for- No, I, we're not a nonprofit. No, mm -hmm. I'd like to make for, a profit. You'd like to make a profit. Okay. <laughs> it, it's this funny. Is, this is how we're making our living. Okay, good. Um, using that triplex as, mm -hmm. okay. Um, yeah. It's funny you mentioned that um, one of my clients is actually in the addiction recovery space uh, in the U.S., so he's not competition to you. Um, and he's he's doing well that he started taking the profits, investing in real estate, in flipping and, and doing that kind of thing. Uh, and he liked the flipping so much that we're actually designing a construction business for him so he can start building custom homes and uh, and, and doing all that. So... Um, maybe I shouldn't say that, <laughs> that his partner was, came out of his program and now fell off the wagon. And now we have some turmoil because of that, but I didn't say that. Mm. Right. So, so how, how is Red Roof coming along? Are you a uh, 100% occupancy or no no red roof okay. recovery uh takes one client at a time so this is uh like i said it's, there's nothing else like it it's an executive appointed program for people like me who didn't want to announce to my employer or my colleagues that i had an addiction issue um i wanted an opportunity to slip away for a week uh go in knee to knee with somebody work for a week in immersive uh, programming and come out with a, a new way to live my life without drugs and alcohol. So that's what I created. I created something called one week. So you come in with me one week, you move into the apartment. I live upstairs. My husband does all the cooking. He's a wonderful cook. Thank God. Otherwise we'd be living in cans and jars. Uh, so yeah, they, uh, it's a, it's a, an exhaustive program. It's 12 to 14 hours a day. And at the end, they come Friday after work. We work for one week. And then the Friday following after lunch, they leave with uh, an aftercare plan for life and a plan for life. And it's, uh, I charge $9,000 plus HST. And that includes everything, uh, including a lifetime aftercare program that I, I'm still developing. And um, I've got three paid clients under my belt now. And, um, one, uh, sadly, has passed away. Uh, one is now in a, a treatment facility for the third time this year, but I think he's making progress. And the other one is doing very well. We're still in touch. And yeah, very well. And he said, okay. one week changed my life. Okay. So three testimonials? Oh, I've got really excellent testimonials from all of them, even the, the one who passed away. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um and it's a one on one. So it's hard to scale one on one. Yes, I have a an investor actually in Guelph who loves what I do. And he said, you know, how do we make a hundred of you? Right. Uh, because it's not a great business model. I realize that. Um, but I think it is because my, my husband is brilliant and 
we actually have put together a business plan that I was going to send to that uh, potential angel investor in Guelph. Um, and like I said, Leo, numbers, not my forte. Okay. Um, I like dealing one-on-one -on -one with people, uh, sharing what has worked for me, which is uh, a variety of cognitive therapies and other techniques. My husband is, um, you know, really the smart one in, in the couplehood for sure. And he has put together a business plan. I think that that is quite workable, but I just, I just don't have the time or uh, the motivation to do anything about it right now. Okay. Um, because you have one pricing level, take it or leave it basically. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's an immersive, it's a, you know, it's a very uh, structured routine and yeah, it's one price. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how long have you been around? Since uh, March of 2020, Okay. <laughs> just before COVID. So we were ready to take our first uh, paying client just uh, when COVID hit and that kind of put the kibosh on that. Okay. And Is there a waiting list of clients? No, no. Okay. I wish because I, I don't get involved with insurance companies or the, the Ontario government. I'm not interested in being aligned with OHIP. I don't want to be dictated who has to come to the program. Okay. So I've got a very stringent uh, intake procedure. I need to know that people are motivated to do the work. If you're not motivated to do the work, then we're wasting each other's time uh, and their money. Um, I prefer that they don't use a credit card to pay for it. I'm aligned with a company called Medicard. Uh, so they, you know, depending on your credit rating, it's a hell of a lot better than putting it on a credit card because I believe that you do need some skin in the game to make it work. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, uh, I'm not in favor of having a family member pay for it at all. So that limits, you know, I'm very selective about the people who can come because I want them to be successful. So I know yeah. what it takes to succeed in recovery. So I screen out. I say no a lot because I'm not motivated by the money, which is probably not a good way to be in business. Not, yeah, not a good business model. <laughs> but I, but it's also good for your success rate because one one failure can destroy you. Mm. <clears throat> right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's well, that's... people, you know, when people ask me, Leo, you know, what's your success rate? I said, it's whatever you make it. It's what you want it to be. You're making the success of the program, not me. You know, they have yeah. to be willing to do the work when they leave. Those willing to do the work are succeeding. Okay. Again, not great from a business model perspective. I know. I understand but I, from I... a commitment perspective. I understand mm -hmm. what you're saying. But from a business model, I th I think that could be redesigned. Hmm. Um, have you I thought was a about journalist for twenty two years as well, Leo? So I'm okay. very uh, probably oversensitive around the manipulation from marketing and mainstream media. So I don't like because uh, my job was to create sensational headlines and embellished facts, and that's something I don't want to do in business. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would your program work in a group setting like like no. AA? No. Nope. Okay. Box programs in group settings don't work. That's why people are going back into places like Homewood three, four times a year with no accountability. You know, and our taxpayers are paying for it at uh, the tune of when I last did my business plan. Looking for some money, it was twelve thousand dollars per person per thirty day program at Homewood. And that's about average. It's probably gone up because they're they're extending the time now. You can go for 60, 90, 120 days, and they just charge the government more and more money for programs that don't work. And they do that's all they have is a group program, and it doesn't work. They're putting right. people in dorm-like settings with roommates who are not conducive to recovery or health or well-being, and it doesn't work. But but yet, you know, if you have the right ad advocacy working for you. Uh, like this guy, he's there for the third time this year. Stuff like that shouldn't happen on the taxpayer's ticket, but it's happening all the time. And it's costing us tens of millions of dollars as taxpayers. And it right. doesn't work. Right. And and when you were proposing, when you were working with the angel investor, 
Uh, how much money were you looking for? Because we have investors. Hmm. Um, I'm not saying they would be interested in this, but um, what would you use the money for? Um, marketing and promotions, advertising. Okay. You know, I just don't have the budget for it. I do as much networking as I can. I use social media as much as I can, but uh, that's, you know, that's not in my wheelhouse either. I, I call it anti-social media. I spend as little time as possible on it. Mm -hmm. Anti-social media. Yeah. Um, and how much money were you looking for? I haven't even really put a, a figure on it, right? The, the guy who wanted to talk to me about, you know, maybe uh, expanding the operation, uh, he wanted me to put together what kind of income potential was available. So my husband helped me with that, but okay. I can't even remember the numbers now. I'd have to consult with, with Lance on that to see how he worked it because, you know, he even had the schedule of people because you need one-on-one -on -one people. You need somebody on site 24 hours a day. And, you know, you need to give people a break. You need, because it's after one week, you're exhausted. You need at least a week off to recover from it. Mm. So you need the staff that uh, you're prepared to pay well enough to have them do that. Okay. So I will, uh, I've got the business plan in the email, so I can send you a copy of that. Sure, I'd be glad to look at it. I would also like to look at the testimonials. I, mm -hmm. I would like to read the testimonials to see what they're getting uh, getting from their perspective. Um, okay, um, I will uh, reach out to Leah, have her call you. Is there a number or by email? Um, uh, either way, I can send you both. Uh, okay. Well, we've been in touch by email, so we have each yeah, other's email. I have your email. Yep. So I will send you testimonials and the business plan when we hang up. Okay. And uh, send me your, your number so Leah can call you and get that working uh, as well, because that's Excellent. on a deadline. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And I'll see you on anti-social media again. <laughs> Very good. Thanks, Leo. I appreciate your time. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Talk to you soon. Bye.